So I was lucky enough to snag Laurel, Laurel Titan, uh, the director and creator of Just One Drop, yeah. correct? A film yeah. about homeopathy, which had a screening last night in Chicago and was super exciting. And I got to watch it and I have a lot of questions yeah. for you. Yeah. So I just want to dive in. Um, so uh, first of all, you know, I think one of the things, I, I'm a user of homeopathy, but I'm also, I would describe myself personally as someone who always kind of has one side of the skeptic in him. Mm -hmm. And so I always struggle with how do we explain it to people? And you describe in the film, homeopathy is the world's most controversial medicine, which I agree with 100%. Can you, and we're familiar with it, we're one of the largest homeopathic pharmacies in the country. And so I guess for me, what I'm, I'm, I'm asking you is, give us an overview of why is it so controversial? What makes it controversial? Okay. Right. Uh, but you, you have to start with one of the most difficult questions. <laughs> you know, I just have to. I just want to dive in yeah. because I feel I, like you know. I did. A, I did this interview. I just have to go on yeah. and jump a shark a little yeah, bit. But please. I did this interview in Australia, mm -hmm. and they said I had. First of all, they said it was going to be five minutes, and mm -hmm. they bring me into this room, and then they stick this little earpiece in. They said, "Well, we've actually cut it down to three minutes." And I said, "Just don't ask me the question how it works." <laughs> so the very first question, and there I am sitting there talking to nothing. I'm talking to like a black thing and mm -hmm. I know I'm live mm -hmm. and I'm also thinking that it's Australian nobody's gonna see me <laughs> and so the first question they asked me is can you tell us what homeopathy is and I froze I was like a deer in the headlights because that's like an hour-long conversation and so anyway that's a it is, it is. and then it turns out I said whatever I said I got something fell sure. out of my mouth and then that goes all over the place. That one interview in Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, two answers but it reminds me of that. What makes it so controversial? Most really what it is, and as the film does mm -hmm. explain, it's the preparation of the remedies. Mm -hmm. Because the remedies are made in a particular way that most of them, not all of them, are um, they're diluted and they're they're shaken or it's called succussed mm -hmm. a certain number of times and then they have serial dilutions and the dilutions usually are below what what is called Avogadro's number which yep. is 10 to the 23rd power which means basically there's nothing left in the water of the original substance not one molecule right of the, nothing yeah. left mm -hmm. but that's on the physical level mm -hmm. so why it's so controversial really is that it they, seems like there's nothing in it, and there is not yet a working theory for why it, how it works. There's a lot of possibilities. There's, there's a yeah. lot of you know theories, but no, they're not all agreeing on one. So why it is so controversial is are those two things. But the other reason it is so controversial, and uh, um, the other reason it's so controversial, is that it it claims to do everything and anything. It works on the physical level. It works with people with with knees. It works with Heal, helping heal broken bones. It works on the emotional level. Mm -hmm. It you know it changes people's lives. And say, so how can a medicine do all yeah, that? It works on plants. It works on animals. Yeah. It works on plants. Yeah. And so the skeptics are like, it can't possibly do all yeah, of yeah. that. So for all those reasons, um, it's I think it's such a it's a very controversial and um, system of medicine. No, I, I think you're right. And I I mean I think that's our our experience. And I think you know I, I think one of the things being a retailer and a pharmacy here we. I feel like the, the, the term in the past few years that I hear thrown a lot around a lot is evidence-based medicine. Yeah. And so people say, and I feel like doctors say it, health professionals say it, and then lay people are starting to say, well, I only use evidence-based medicine. Yeah. And I think it's said oftentimes with a certain amount of maybe derision, yeah. definitely authority, uh, certainty, and kind of a sense of finality. Like I'm. I don't do that, I do evidence-based medicine. And it strikes me, uh, having watched your film, it strikes me that you're interested in kind of saying, hey, let's, let's, look, at the, let's look at homeopathy or at least certain um, bits of information or evidence about homeopathy and let's actually look at it in a true sense of what evidence-based medicine might mean. Is that, is that accurate? Am I characterizing that correctly? <laughs> I think so. Um, but tell me, can you be uh, yeah, specific in your Yeah, question? because, well, I guess m my question, and it goes back to the central controversy of homeopathy, which is to say evidence based medicine and then to prioritize only one type of evidence or evidence coming from only one place or overwhelming evidence is not true evidence based medicine. So, in other words, like the, the, um, the central premise of this film is really that um, there is evidence out there and it's maybe being systematically ignored. 
right? And so I feel like, to me, I have a, I always have a problem when people say evidence-based medicine in that way because I, yeah. I think that it, basic, it essentially cuts off the idea of there's some stuff I can't account for in my system and I need to at least leave enough opening to continue questioning that. I'm going to... That's a multi-level complex yeah, question. I know, it so is. So let me see if I can break uh, yeah, it down. Sure. It's a great question. <laughs> but let me see if I can break it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you have to look at what is evidence. Mm -hmm. Anecdotal That's... evidence is evidence, mm -hmm. first of all. They might say it's weak evidence, but it is evidence. And a lot of medicines are used on pharmaceutical, in the far, you know, straight pharmaceutical mm -hmm. com, uh, medicines are used off-label. And they're used off-label because they have anecdotal evidence that it actually works for X, Y, and Z, even though the studies haven't yet proved there's no um, randomized controlled trials that say it works for that. And they use it all the time in conventional mm -hmm. medicine. They use things off-label because that's anecdotal evidence that's worth something. Is, is it even fair so. to say it's more than anecdotal? Like you might, anecdotal would be, in my mind, maybe I'm wrong, you know more, I'm sure, but would be like, I, my doctor heard from your doctor that this works, but then once my doctor has an experience with it, that's experiential, is it not? That's still anecdotal. Okay, and one, oh, that's and my when, question. But I, uh, that's why it's a multi-level mm -hmm. question, so I'm gonna try to break yeah. it down. So the first part is, is there evidence? What is evidence? Evidence can be anecdotal and that can be strong evidence, mm -hmm. but they say, okay, it's weak evidence. What are the golden uh, rule for homeopathy right now, uh, I'm sorry, the golden rule for medicine, testing medicine, is randomized control trials. Yes. So that when people say evidence, usually they're referring to that. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying that they always claim that there's not enough strong evidence and they usually mean randomized controlled trial or CTs of homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And when people say there's not evidence, that's usually what they're talking about. The reality is there are many, many studies that have been done on homeopathy. Some are not very good, some are very old, some need to be redone, but there is a, it's some studies that are done, that are quite well done, that show that homeopathy clearly works better than placebo. So what happens is, and this is why the, another part of your question, is I really have a theory of uh, what I call people's worldview. Mm -hmm. And if you have a worldview in a certain way, and this, this answers another question that, yeah. that I think is I kind probably, of, yeah. that I think is kind of behind there is yeah. what is behind that skeptical mindset? And Absolutely. why is there such a strong debunker force that is trying to basically kill homeopathy? And people ask me this all the time. Do you think it's connected to big pharma? I have no idea if it's connected mm -hmm. to big pharma. As far as I'm concerned, homeopathy is tiny. I don't think they pay much attention yeah. to what homeopathy is. Big pharma is not losing sleep over homeopathy. It's not losing sleep. No. But what I think these people that are the real strong naysayers, I call them debunkers, not skeptics, because mm -hmm. the reality is everybody's skeptical. I think yeah. being skeptical is good. Yeah, it sure. means you, you actually are using your mind. But debunkers are sort of stuck in this mindset. And I'm going to try to answer your question this way, is that when you are in that debunk the in that mindset you think that you're convinced that homeopathy is impossible mm -hmm. for the reasons I mentioned earlier therefore it's impossible therefore people that practice it are charlatans and those that go to homeopaths are wasting their time and money and not seeking proper treatment so what these people are doing is they think they're protecting the public and if they truly understood homeopathy they would have what I call ontological shock which mean their entire worldview is shattered because they are stuck in this worldview, this way of looking mm -hmm. at the world, which is the very biological, physical world, mm -hmm. and they're stuck this way, even if you present them overwhelming yeah. evidence, they cannot see it. They cannot see it. And so you got, you got to like all my questions. I just ran okay. out of all my okay, questions because, no. <laughs> because <laughs> <you> actually, <laughs> no, absolutely. So First of all, I was a religion major that was focused on sociology and kind of phenomenology of religion uh, back 20 year, 25 years ago. Um, so I didn't want to. I wasn't going to use the word ontological, but or ontol, you know, just ontology. But it's that is exactly what. We're talking about there's right. one of this, I, and that is one of my questions about the skeptic. I kind of view it as zealotry or something right. like that, right. where right. it starts to lose. You know, I, I have a, I personally have always had a problem with people who are too extreme on any one side right. and don't leave, as I mentioned in the first question, kind of an opening for, for actual questions. Right. If you shut down questions before they begin or or inquiries, just because you don't 
by the premise, then you're not really a scientist. Right. Well, that's why one of the characters in our film, one of our main characters, is Alex Tornier. Yeah. He is, he is like, people say, well, real science, he is as real as you get. And if I could read the list of his credentials, which I can't even remember, he's way up there. He's a, he's a physicist. physicist yeah. He had a personal experience with homeopathy, and he was so curious, why does this work? And it changed his whole course in, of, of study. And he's really researching, which I can get well, to later. I, I wrote down, he, yeah. he describes it himself as the least impressive yeah. form of medicine. Yeah. That was his mindset. He said, yeah. I'm a physicist, yeah. everything is physical, I understand the world that yeah. way. And this seemed like, I went to it just because he was at the wit's end, right? Yeah. He, was, he was, I mean, he was going to lose his career, his life, it sounded yeah. like. So yeah, I think uh, that is... You, you got to the heart of my question, which is my, one of my next questions, which is about the debunkers. And I guess in that sense, you know, I, I think that says a lot about the goal of your film. You know, while we were doing this on Facebook, we just looked and there is a question about the provable nature of homeopathy versus placebo. And I mean, if I can do a quick summary of what I took from the film, sure. which is, you know, part of the controversy, as you said in the first question, is that it's not, you're not saying we understand this and we know how, nobody in homeopathy it seems is saying that, right? I mean, maybe there are, but not in the film. It's a very very, very balanced view that, that it's, we're not saying we understand the mechanism and we can say this definitely works and it's always different than placebo. What we're saying is there are high quality studies out there that show in certain cases with certain conditions that certain remedies uh, have clearly have a significant difference uh, when compared against placebo in a, randomly controlled double-blind trial, correct? Mm -hmm. And so that, to me, is what makes it so interesting um, in that it takes away the, the um, it takes away the ability of anyone on either side to say, what I think is definitely true. Right. Right. And that's what makes this film great, and that's what makes homeopathy a very challenging case to talk about using, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm a user, but I say that I you know when someone isn't and I have to introduce it to them That is the thing that I I feel like you have to at least Acknowledge it and bump up against it a little bit yeah, before you can exactly. before you can navigate that those waters And I guess I look at it, you know, and I I don't know if this is helpful, but I always think That much evidence that at least makes us question something, we can see some evidence, my feeling is, and this is where I don't understand skeptics, or the debunkers, as you say, which I agree with, that's a better term, mm -hmm. is that, in general, the other thing that everyone acknowledges is that homeopathy is, at worst, relatively harmless, in the sense of, you're, not, you're probably not going to take something, you're not going to take something, they don't have cases of people taking the wrong remedy and dying. Whereas we do in other medications, in herbs, in just in food, just about anything you can eat that happens or ingest you, that ha that happens, and I think that one of the things that's interesting to me is that there's this unwillingness to discuss the fact that if that's the worst thing that could happen, we're talking about the most gentle form of medicine known to humankind, and the the downside risks, even if you think that that's quackery, are relatively small. A $6 remedy, a $10 remedy is probably not going to change the face of most people, you know, change people's lives. Do you agree? And is so, what so is your question? <laughs> yeah. No, it's just a long <laughs> rambling statement on my part. I just wanted to get my, I want to get my soapbox. But, but, no, I guess, I guess, you know, I guess it brings me to, it brings me to maybe your purpose in creating this film. Yeah. Because, you know, our, I think I did my a little bit of homework on you and it said like you're not doing this out of like Dr. Alex Tournier or someone else you're not doing this out of a major life-changing health experience that like won you over personally right so tell me about your motivation okay. in this given that landscape if you agree with what I said okay and again it's a multi-layer -layer yeah. question you gotta, let me try to tease it apart I know uh, the first question it sounds like why did I make this film yes so let's just answer that <laughs> um, I made this film because I well, I really was a big skeptic, mm, okay. and I, uh, my other films are part of their, me they have, uh, some of them have medical <coughs> connections, even I though I did that. make a film on alien abduction, but even <laughs> that show, they made a whole conference at Harvard Medical School around that film, wow. so I was really in that world, in the medical world, and I was really influenced by very smart doctors and scientists that are 
you know, from that Boston community, mm -hmm. which I came from Boston. And so I was very influenced how they thought about homeopathy, and homeopathy could not possibly work, and I became a very big skeptic. And I have a chronic condition that conventional medicine couldn't help mm -hmm. at all. So I heard about this MD homeopath in Los Angeles, and, at, you know, at that point I was desperate. I was kind of where Alex mm -hmm. was, and so I, I found myself going to see him. And really what it was, and that, that's why I make it really clear, it's not my personal, like, I had mm -hmm. a miraculous cure, but it really was how he looked at health and healing was so fascinating to me. And it really was, oh, my God, people don't know about this. And I really started with a curiosity. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is this medicine, and what are these claims, really? And why do people not know about it? So that's really was where it started. And it really started with that place of curiosity. But I always say when I start films, it's really like falling in love. Yeah. So you have to be in love to make a film because it has to sustain you through all the trials and tribulations. And how long? How long did this took? Eight years. Wow. So I. So when you, you know how I say, like I always say, I'm not going to fall in love again. I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> and you can't help it. So now I'm in love, and now I have to make this film, and I'm really <laughs> curious. So I start there, and then what sustained me for the eight years was hearing story after story after story of people's miraculous cures. People that. I heard one just the other day, I was in Winnipeg, mm -hmm. and the woman that picked me up, and she said, I was studying, I think she was in some kind of science, and I forgot particularly what it was, and she had a health condition, and she went to a homeopath, didn't even know what homeopathy was, mm -hmm. one remedy, had a dramatic change, she goes, what is the same thing, and she totally changed her course of study and became a homeopath. I hear that story over and over and over again, I hear about pets that are dying and they come back to life and on and on for eight years. Hundreds and hundreds yeah. of stories. So I'm hearing all these cure stories and at the same time I have so many people in my life suffering from this and that. And I'm like, why don't they know what this medicine is? Why they don't know is that it's not out there and if it's out there, it's told, it's misrepresented and it's debunked. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, I have to do something about that as a filmmaker. All I'm trying to do with this film is actually create a level playing field mm -hmm. and put the information out there so that people can make up their own mind. And for me, this film is not just about homeopathy. It's about freedom of choice in healthcare. I love that. And that's really what drove me for eight years to make this film. And that's what's driving the distribution. That's because awesome. the reality is I don't really care if people go to homeopathy. I care that they're suffering. And yeah. I want people out of suffering. But the other part of your question that you had um, about there was something else in your question that I wanted to respond to. Um, My questions are always like three paragraphs. They're all, time they're all but it was yeah. about, um, what, what else were you, there was something else you were asking in there and I want to, oh I know, so the safety of homeopathic medicines. Hmm? And this is what I really have to tell you my opinion. Again, hmm. it's just my opinion. Yeah, please. Um, but homeopathy is, everyone says it's safe and it's safe and it's powerful and it can cure all these things. You can't say that and at the same time say it's totally safe because it does, it can cause harm. And it's it's a very powerful medicine and if people take the wrong medicine yes. and start getting symptoms and ignore the symptoms and keep taking the remedy over and over again, True. it will cause harm. And it doesn't mean it's irreversible. But we can't say that it's just safe all the time and also Agreed. very powerful. That's a, that's a really good clarification yeah. and I think brings yeah. out some of the complexity of it. Yeah. And I would say that safe is used relative to other forms of medication yeah. where you're more likely to notice something bad yeah. more quickly yes. if you and take it. it and, yeah, exactly. Right. It won't kill you. And if you take one or two remedies you're trying out, you're, gonna be, you're probably going to be fine. Yes. Um, but it's powerful medicine. Um, so I have two stories about that because yeah. I, I just I love it and then I want to talk about one of the stories in your film yeah. but uh, so my I grew up as I mentioned with homeopathy um, but then when I had my own family that's when it became much more important to me you know because uh, so I have two daughters who are now 10 and 13 um, when my younger daughter was born she was not a good sleeper and Okay, four months, no, not sleeping through the night. Six months, not sleeping through the night. Yeah. Nine, 12. We hit 18 months, and I would say that our marriage would have ended if we didn't get some sleep. We were losing it. Yeah. And uh, we tried, we read every book. Is it our training? We let her scream, we comforted her, we did everything you could possibly do. And at 18 months old, you're not going to give a child medication, right? right. So we, I went to my homeopath here in Chicago, Dr. Scooby, who is. Uh, someone that I, when my parents took me to as a kid, 
we sat there for two hours. He watched right. Nola play around and asked us a bunch of questions about everything she does and you know these things that you talk about in your film. It seems like an odd bunch of questions. At the end, he has a remedy and he says, tonight, give it to her and then put her down and stay with her till she's almost asleep. Tomorrow, give her the remedy and walk, say good night nicely and walk out the door. Um, on the third night, I would like you to just give the remedy, put her in the bed and just walk out immediately. Not, and you know, say, you can say good night, but it was like three steps kind of like for the most extreme. The first night after 18 months of never getting a single night sleeping all the way through, she said, no, and then she just put her head down when we walked out the door. We stayed five minutes. We thought, okay, maybe this is a fluke. She's just really tired. The next night, good night, Nola. She did not wake up once in the middle of the night till she was about four years old. I'm not joking. Can I have this sermon? Oh, it was, <laughs> I have it written down somewhere what it is, but it was amazing. And now you're telling me like, that's my story. As I was watching, I was thinking, it's not to me, but it changed my life because I was losing it. We were losing it, you know? Yeah. like. Depriving of yourself of sleep for 18 months, yeah. you can't have a normal relationship, you can't function in the world. And that was my, you know, the story to me that won me over. Yeah. And that's, those are the kind of things like you hear yes. again and again in the yes. film. Yes. And I think that one of the things, one of the most moving parts of the film was the Korn family. Yeah. Which, you know, it's sort of the central thread in terms of the anecdotal story that you get to experience in the film. And that is about Lucas Korn mm -hmm. and the Korns of New York. And I'd like to you to, could you give a quick summary of what, you know, like... No, I'll there, tell you. Yeah. Well, uh, what I... No, I'll tell Why you. Why do you movie so you. much of that? That yes, was the that central story. Yes, that I can tell story. you because then people have yeah. to watch the film. Yes. The other thing I want to say that I just found out, I know we're here in Chicago, mm -hmm. but this morning I found out that Nancy Korn is actually going to be at the screening we're having on Sunday in New York and Long Island. Awesome. And well, so we'll link that up yeah, below. Yeah, that's, so. that's really... It's all sold out. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there, we can always... So you can get a bigger theater, mm -hmm. but it's thrilling, and I actually want to see if I can do a Facebook Live while she's talking as well. Awesome. Because she's, when I first went to that MD homeopath, mm -hmm. he was specifically working with autism. Mm -hmm. And he said, nobody knows what to do when I'm helping these kids get better. And he, it, that's what started the film. He says, you get better and make a film about this. And I joke and say, doctor's orders. <laughs> but then a few months later, I said, find me a family that has footage. And so he found me this family in New York, and they sent me these 10 hours of this home so video good. footage, including that moment where Lucas is, they're calling out to him and they realize he's autistic. And I was like, oh my God, this is a filmmaker's dream. I was. And yeah. then I went and did the interview with them, and I, that was my first interview in the whole film. And we did the interview, I had yet to meet her, yeah. and I had a crew there, and when we were done the interview, they said, you have a killer film. She is one of the best people I have ever interviewed. And so that's where the film started. And I was going to make originally the film just about autism and homeopathy. And then I realized, well, nobody knows what homeopathy is. And what if the kid doesn't get better? I'm not gonna have much of a film. So I started there and then it just kept progressing. You know, one story led yeah. to the next. But that's why I had that family. And I was, for, as, as the viewer, Yeah. I mean, that was, it sucks you in, and I feel yeah. like, you know, and you feel it personally as a parent. I just, it, in every way, I felt uh, very moved by that. And she is a great interview because she's not, it's not like a, I don't know, there's, she's so genuine to get to see the footage yeah. before they knew. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. you realize how life changing this whole situation is for them and how much they needed hope. Yeah. And, and so that brings me to my next question, which is, um, Talk to me, if you would, about what, you know, I, I don't think, this isn't a screed against Western allopathic medicine or something like that. This is, as you mentioned, a film about healthcare choices. And I think I always try to emphasize, like, what does homeopathy seem to do well versus what uh, our system of Western medicine does well. Although homeopathy is a Western medicine, just so you know. Yeah, oh, fair enough. <laughs> Comes our, our allopathic medicine, <laughs> yeah. what of we experience in the hospital yeah. and with most of our doctors out there. Yeah. Uh, if you could tell, you know, I think, because I think that that sometimes helps break down the wall that yeah. people yeah, feel. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, first of all, the other strong message of the film, other than freedom of choice in healthcare, is about the integration mm -hmm. of medicine. And my dream, it really is my dream, is to be able to go someplace and, it, and have it be all about the patient, what's good for the patient in front of you. 
do you go see a homeopath? Do you see an allopathic doctor? Do you do Ayurvedic? Do you do mm -hmm. an osteopath? And that to me is medicine, and that's the best form of medicine. So homeopathy works really well in an integrative place. Yeah. Um, it, it can really support, if you have a broken bone, you don't want to go to a homeopath, you go have it set, but homeopathy can help it heal faster. So you go to the I hospital, don't. you have, yeah, <laughs> you go, you have you, surgery, you can get out of surgery, you can heal faster, you can heal without, you know, with, yeah. without painkillers. So it also can work in a really in integrated way, but the place where homeopathy really, really shines is in chronic conditions. Yes. The conventional medicine, it really doesn't know what to do. And, it, you know, unfortunately, our healthcare system has become a health management system. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you want? You're on blood pressure medicine, you're on, you know, Stand. control mm -hmm. symptoms, and you take that medicine away. Mm -hmm. What happens? Does the blood pressure go back to where you want to be? No. You, you're managing the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Homeopathy, that's where it shines, is there's so many chronic conditions that people are suffering and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. The list is endless, and there's more and more every day. That's the place where homeopathy really can help. Yeah. Uh, on top of helping on a day-to-day -day with colds, coughs, and flu, which sure. is also used it instead of antibiotics and save the antibiotics for when we really need them. Because we're running out of antibiotics. Yeah. And that's a big it's problem. It's getting scary. It's a big problem. I don't think, and I might be incorrect in this, there's been a new form of um, antibiotics since the 70s. I might, I don't know if anyone knows that, but I don't I, remember I, off the map. It's something like that. But and yeah, so we're, no, we're, we're not coming, out, there's not a big pipeline right now. Out yeah. and, 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 and so, <clears throat> you know, homeopathy can help there too on that end as people use homeopathy instead of antibiotics. and you know, then we're saving our antibiotics when we really need them. Yeah. So for all those things, that's where homeopathy really can be helpful in the big picture. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think that's, to me, uh, I'm not, I always say to people, I'm not on a mission to win you over to homeopathy. I'm on a mission to help you. And if that's this right. helps you, that's, right. that's all you need. That's the only window I'm asking for. Uh, and it's clearly, homeopathy is not an expensive, uh, right. you know, it's yeah. like, we don't yeah. make our money. We're not yeah. in business because of homeopathy. Yeah. So I said, like, I'm also not looking to sell you things because really I could sell you a lot more expensive yeah. herbs or other supplements than yeah. homeopathy. What I want to do is find something that gives you from some relief. Yeah. And so many yeah, people who you. find their way right. to us are usually like the people in your film yeah. at their wits end yeah. or just have no more hope or running out of options and saying, I've tried everything. What do I do? And it's not a guarantee that it'll work, but it often does especially for these chronic conditions, mm -hmm. some level of relief, you know? And what I also have to say that people that don't know much mm -hmm. about homeopathy, for a chronic condition, you really should go to a homeopath. Yes. A trained homeopath who's trained many, many years um, because it's complex. It is. Um, but for things, it doesn't hurt to go into, you know, your pharmacy and try something. I have a cold, I have a cough, some I have a stomach bee sting. I have a bee sting, yeah. I have, um, you know, what, I'm trying to heal faster, of, like all, yeah, all the after yeah. surgery. I have a bruise, you know, all those things for sure you can use uh, over the counter homeopathy. Yeah, products. acute homeopathy, we're great at helping people find those things, and we yeah. ourselves recommend a homeopath for anything that gets to some sort of chronic, deeper level, yeah. constitutional kind of situation. Then I think you should have a homeopath. But here's the other thing for people that don't know homeopathy is that. You go there for one condition. Usually, and it's so funny, people say, oh, it treats the whole system. But nobody goes to a homeopath and sits down and says, I want to treat my whole system. No, yeah. They go because they have a particular you know, problem, so a presenting mm -hmm. problem. So what you do is you go to a homeopath with that presenting problem, and all of a sudden you notice, gee, I don't have sleep problems anymore. Or I have this like knee that's always hurting, which I never tell my homeopath, all of a sudden doesn't hurt. I'm not depressed anymore, and the, and the, it's it basically kickstarts your body to start healing itself, yeah. and that's really one of the, the the beauties of homeopathy is it it gets your whole being working better, which is why homeopathy helps the whole family system and the societal system, and it kind of you know goes out from there. We have one person in the film, Roger Morrison, mm -hmm. that he says. Um, you know, it, it doesn't just treat the symptom, it, it treats, you know, kind of like the whole the whole being. Yeah, it treats the um, person, yeah. And, and so that's like one of the one of the other um, points about homeopathy that is different than conventional And that medicine. makes it a very satisfying experience yeah. in it, in, you know, when compared to your average medical experience. Yeah, I mean, I had one experience, again, I, you know, I used homeopathy myself and I didn't know that much at the beginning and I went for a particular condition 
and I have a, a, I have a lot of uh, injury in my mm. knee, and I was mm. staying with my friend in New York at the time, and she had very steep stairs, mm. and it was always like painful for me to go up and down, and I'll never forget this. I took the remedy at night, and I was walking down the stairs, and I, all of a sudden I had no pain. <laughs> and I wrote to him, I said, my knee doesn't, he, never, he didn't yeah, know, I never yeah. told him, he goes, that's homeopathy. Yeah, yeah, it's, so I guess, um, you know, if you're listening to all that, you don't have any interest about homeopathy, it's probably not the film for you, but if yeah. anything that caught your interest, you should see this film. It's excellent, I was really impressed, and it came at a certain, just a, at the right time, I think, it's coming at the right time in, a, in sort of this, all these debates going on in healthcare and everything, and I'm, I'm curious, how does someone who's out there watching right now learn more about this film? Sure, I mean, I'll answer that. And just a little thing I wanna say yeah. is the question that I'm answering the film, mm -hmm. And I have to really t make sure people know this, it's not trying to prove whether homeopathy mm -hmm. works or not. It really doesn't. And if you come in skeptical, you're probably going to leave skeptical. But really the question that I'm asking in this film is, has homeopathy had a fair shake? Yeah, I agree. And that, so it's really, it, that's why I say it really is, is looking at the controversy of homeopathy. So how do you get to see this film? Yeah. I, was, I wasn't able to get any grants. I've been making films for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. I always get money from grants, including my film on alien abduction. <laughs> I applied for so many grants and got turned down over and over and over again. And I thought everyone would be interested in, interested in this because it's so fascinating. So I turned to individuals mm -hmm. and crowdfunding. And I raised all, you know, I raised all the money that went into this film came from mm -hmm. individuals. Awesome. That's the same way I'm distributing it. And we're doing this grassroots kind of distribution, certainly here in the US. Yeah. And all this information is on my website, justonedropfilm.com. We'll, we'll make sure we'll it's linked. On there. Yeah. And all you need to do is uh, host a screening, and you click to US, and all you need to do is put your zip code where you live. And the, this great. organization is called Gather Film, does all the logistics, they do all the ticketing, they do everything for you. It, and all you have to do is promote it. And as they say in Australia, you have to get bums in seats. You get bums in so seats. So you I have like to get, you have to promote <laughs> it, you really have to advertise. And other than that, everything's done for you. That's and awesome. so that's how we're doing all our screenings, and we want to have more and more and more. And yeah. the best part of the screening is the Q&A. It's <laughs> as good as the film. And so the film was really made for those kind of discussions. Well, I'm excited. So we had Chicago premiere last night, um, but I think that we were talking beforehand, yeah. and I think we're going to work on seeing if we can later this year get you back here and do a screening and really get one of those great conversations going, because I think that there are so many people out there who want to know more, right? And I think that this, you're right, you give it a... I, I'm so impressed with the fair shake that you're giving it in this film mm -hmm. uh, and just the opening that window of a chance that people can experience it and have some understanding of where it might fit in their larger uh, personal health journey. Mm. Right? Yeah. So I'm excited. Thank you for joining thank me you, here thank today. You, thank you. I'm really excited. It's really great uh, to if be you're here. on Facebook Live, stick around. We'll uh, answer any questions that have come up on the screen. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. See you next time. Okay, and thank you. Thank yeah. you, Anthony. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Check us out at smallflower.com. Don't forget to subscribe. And let us know what you think in the comments. Check out the rest of our vids. So you can look good, smell good, feel good.